A warm welcome to News Now. I am Fidelia Agoncha. We begin with the building collapse in Joss Plateau State, where 14 people have been confirmed dead. The three-story residential building collapsed late on Monday following heavy rain in the region. NEMA's head of resource operation, rescue operation, North Central, Narudin Musa, confirmed the death toll on Tuesday. He says 14 bodies were recovered from the rubble, while four other victims were rescued alive. Emergency officials said the death toll could have been higher if the building had not collapsed during working hours when most residents were away. It will be recorded that, in, that uh, 20 people died when a building housed in a nursery and primary school collapsed in Lagos in March 2019. Well, President Muhammadu Buhari says those criticizing isolated cases of insecurity in Nigeria are not patriotic. Buhari's comment is coming barely 24 hours after former President Olusegun Obasanjo, in an open letter, criticized his government for failing to address what he described as the growing rate of insecurity. While hosting the national executives of the Buhari campaign organization at the State House in Abuja, Buhari stressed that every country has security challenges and his government has made significant progress in fighting terrorism. The president pledged that his administration will use all the resources at its disposal to secure the country and protect the lives of all Nigerians. Continued attacks on soft locations by bandits and insurgents has left hundreds of people killed and millions of others displaced in communities across the country. But in the wake of these attacks, Nigeria's Chief of Army Staff Tuka Baratai is insisting that security agencies have successfully tackled the security situation. Baratai said security officials have recorded great success in the fight against insecurity, stressing that cries of insecurity across Nigeria is a political game. The Army Chief speaking at 1st Division Super Camp in Beningwari local government area of Kaduna State said apart from some isolated remote areas, the attacks have drastically reduced. He also emphasized that he believes the security situation across Nigeria has improved. Baratai's statement is coming a day after gunmen abducted Zamfara's director of budget in Kaduna State. Well, still on security matters, the Nigeria police says it has received instructions from President Muhammadu Buhari to begin the implementation of community policing across the country. Four spokesperson Frank Mba said this while parading suspects linked to the kidnapped, uh, kidnap of the district head of Dara, Musa Omar, who was abducted at his residence in Dara, Katsina State on May 1, 2019. The development is coming months after a presidential committee on SARS recommended the implementation of state and community policing to President Buhari after a nationwide consultation on the conduct of police officers. The directive is also coming in the wake of increased cases of ins insecurity, banditry and kidnapping in various states across the country. For every crime that has been committed or is being committed, there are local collaborators. And this is where the concept of community policing comes into play. And that explains why the president of this country has clearly given us a marching order to begin to implement the concept of community policing and also explains why the Inspector General of Police, IGP, Mohamed Abubakar Damu, is pursuing the implementation, the full implementation of community policing across the country with unalloyed vigor. We therefore want to call on Nigerians to be their brother's keeper. Be mindful of the people living in your neighborhood. Be interested in knowing your next day neighbor and what your next door neighbor does for a living. If you are a landlord, you must also take time to be sure that you know who you are renting your house to. We encourage owners of property across the length and breadth of this country to conduct proper vetting and background check of prospective tenants to be sure that they don't give out their property to persons 
who would take over this property and use these properties as places for planning or plotting and executing crimes. Well, the Nigerian Senate has resolved to hold a security summit to brainstorm on finding a lasting solution to challenges in Nigeria. The development is coming a year after the lawmakers held a similar summit on security where it came up with 18 recommendations on how to address the issue. Anita Felix has more. On Friday, July 12th, the daughter of Nigeria's social cultural group, Afeni Ferry Funke Olakuri, was shot dead by alleged kidnappers when she was traveling along the Ondore Road. It's the latest evidence of Nigeria's battle for her security. At plenary on Tuesday, Senator Ayo Akinyalure set a security debate in motion. Deplorable set of insecurity on this express road has now reached an alarming state and has significantly eroded peace and free movement of people with palpable fear and rising tension across the nation, thus giving several scattering speculative analysis in the media about the state of the nation. Deeply concerned, Mr. President, that these frequent insurgencies may soon result into a breakdown of laws and order on ethno-communal clashes in the southern part of the country if adequate measures are not taken to fish out the perpetrators of these criminal acts and bring them to book accordingly. Opposition political parties have referenced Funke's death as an indication of the failure of the ruling party to lead well and secure Nigerians. But lawmakers are asking politicians to focus on the common good rather than politicize the incident or point fingers to any ethnic group. From the various reports that we have received in this chamber, Igbos have been killed, Yorubas have been killed, Fulanese have been killed, Hausas have been killed. So we, have, we must not succumb to the insinuation that what is happening is being perpetrated by a particular ethnic group. The solution to this could be community policing, says Senator Mohamed Musa, representing Niger East. The community policing that we are talking about is very important. Community policing is not sectional. Community policing is for all, all Nigerians. So I will call on the federal government, I will call on the Senate, I will call on all the security agencies to come together, aggregate all the resources and all the, 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 the resolu uh, resolutions that have been taken before now to see how they can come up with a holistic approach that will solve these problems. The rise in cases of killings is also creating a negative impression of Nigeria. Senator Odeni Tolulope says insecurity is costing Nigeria much more than expected. Mr. President, there's nothing that we do here that pales if we don't get our security situation right in this country. <coughs> Only last week, we discussed here the issue of the Continental Free Trade Agreement, and all to my surprise, Ghana has now been made to be the headquarters of this Continental Free Trade Agreement headquarters. This is a major loss for this country, Mr. President. Economically, it has major impact, and these are the implications that happens when you don't get your security situation right. It has major economic impact for this country. And we cannot watch every day, coming here, mourning, grieving, having one minute of silence, as innocent Nigerians are being killed and no action is, taken, is being taken. There's a feeling of hopelessness, helplessness, that one is feeling that nothing we do here has effect. Senate President Ahmed Lawan has assured Nigerians that they're on top of the matter. He says the Senate would hold a security summit soon to tackle the challenge once and for all. Aneta Felix, TV360, Nigeria. Acting Chief Justice of Nigeria, Tanku Muhammad, will on Wednesday appear before the Senate for screening and confirmation of his appointment by President Muhammad Buhari. Senate President Ahmed Lawan announced the date during plenary on Tuesday. Lawan said Tanko would appear before the entire committee of the Senate to commence his screening exercise. He said copies of Tanko's resume had been distributed to lawmakers 
to enable them to have adequate background information about him and his career. Tanko replaced former Chief Justice Walter Onoyan, who retired following allegations of corruption and false asset declaration. Senior Special Assistant to President Muhammad Buhari on Media Affairs, Garba Shehu, says the Buhari-led administration is still negotiating with Boko Haram for the release of the Chibok girls. The statement follows report from a former CNN anchor who alleged that the Nigerian government had forgotten the remaining kidnapped girls. The journalist had alleged that the federal government did not know who to negotiate with since Boko Haram had split into different factions. But reacting to this, Shehu said, though the divide of the sex affected negotiations, the federal government and international partners are still engaging through third parties with the terrorist sex. Boko Haram insurgents kidnapped 276 female students from the government secondary school in Chibok in Bernou State on April 14, 2014. While the federal government secured the release of some of the girls, about 112 others are still with the terrorist sex. And to judicial matters, now the Supreme Court has affirmed the election of Senator representing Delta North's Peter Nwoboshi. Ned Nwoko had approached the Apex Court, arguing that Nwoboshi did not win the primary election conducted by the PDP on October 2, 2018 in Delta State. But ruling on the matter, Justice Iang Okoro dismissed the suit for lack of jurisdiction. The Federal High Court in Abuja had on April 3, 2019, declared Ned Nwoko as the true candidate of the PDP for the February 23, 2019 National Assembly election. However, the Court of Appeal in Abuja reversed the High Court judgment, pronouncing Nwoboshi as the authentic candidate of the PDP. Nwoko then approached the Supreme Court to challenge the decision of the Appeal Court. Now, and the Apex Court has now ruled against him. The Medical Association of Nigeria says it has registered no fewer than 5 million citizens into the country's social safety net program to complement the National Social Health Insurance Scheme. President of the association, Francis Faduile, reviewed this after meeting with President Muhammad Buhari in Abuja. Faduile, however, reviewed that lack of funding in the health sector has become a major issue of concern. The Nigerian Medical Association has come up with its own way of ensuring that we have universal health care by having the project 5 by 3 which is a project that we are hoping to get 5, 000, 5 million Nigeria enrolled in a social safety net, like something close to a health insurance scheme. And we can actually, uh, we, we are extending it to the informal sector generally within the next three years. But importantly, we know that funding is an issue in health. We reminded the government, the federal government, and our president that the three point less than 5% that was budgeted for health in 2018 and 2019 was still a far cry from the 15% that was approved by Abuja Declaration uh, as agreed by Abuja Declaration in 2001 by African heads of states. And the president has assured us that he's going to work closely to see how he can improve the funding for health. Uh, generally, I think we will continue to inter interact with the uh, National Primary Health Care Development Agencies to see that the money percolates down. And as you know, the money is not going through the, through the states. It's actually going from the central government, central Bank of Nigeria down to the primary health care centers. And we are working with those people who are working at those levels. For news now, we'll continue in just a moment. Don't go away.
Welcome back. Well, let's now join Annette Felix for the business segment of the news. It's over to you, Annette. Well, experts in Nigeria's aviation sector have been reacting to reports that the federal government plans to partner Ethiopia Airlines to launch a national carrier for Nigeria. President Aviation Safety Roundtable Initiative, Benga Olo, speaking on the developments, condemned the move, saying Nigeria has enough resources to launch the national carrier. He has now advised the federal government to instead partner the Aviation Safety Roundtable to ensure proper professional guidelines on the issue. Are we saying that Nigeria has no pool of aviation experts? Since the time of Nigeria Airways to the time of Okada, Cabo, Bellevue, until today, your, air, um, your airpiece, your aero, your dana, are we saying there are no pool of professionals in this land? that can package another carrier for government. Why must we have low esteem to that extent? That all the time we want to do a thing, we're looking out there. Perhaps we can then begin to think of having a foreign head of state, a foreign governor, a foreign commissioner, a foreign local government chairman. We must have confidence in ourselves so my submission is that we got to look inward. Home breed national career is our solution. We have expertise in every area. We have expertise with pilots, engineers, commercial men, people who know security, who has A to Z of airline knowledge. If you want to partner, I want to recommend to government, number one partner is Aviation Roundtable. It isn't that we're looking for a job. It is that we love our country. And we're a body of professionals of many years. We have worked in all these foreign airlines. We excel there. So I am not just marketing. I am saying the truth. If a Nigerian will remain the Nigerian president, when we Nigerians can package national carrier. Besides, we have carriers on ground that are suffering. And those carriers on ground, why are they suffering? So we got to look at it very critically. Because even if Ethiopian airline partners today, with the environment the local ones are operating, we might not get the desired result. Cryptocurrency is popularly known as digital money. It was created using codes to make money transfer secure. There are over 2,000 cryptocurrencies, but the most popular is Bitcoin, and there is a slow acceptance of the product in African markets. Cryptocurrency company Ludo has been enlightening Nigerians on the benefits of investing in cryptocurrency. Ludo country manager Owen Odiase says Facebook's launch of its own cryptocurrency Libra validates their message of the pros of the product. The whole essence behind cryptocurrency and Bitcoin was to facilitate instant payments, P2P, without going through like five middlemen. As it is when you want to do transfers, let's say for a cross-border payment, you have to go through like five middlemen before it gets to beneficiary. So the man that's behind Bitcoin is called Satoshi Nakamoto. So he needed to invent something that would just allow for instant payments. So that's the reason why Bitcoin was created. It just allows you to make transfers, right? It's money that is safe, it's frictionless, you don't have to go through, it's easy to use setup, and you don't have to, it's zero to, zero to not in terms of transaction fee. It's actually very important, very useful for cross-border payments. People use it for cross-border payments a lot. They have customers that they usually make payments to their suppliers using cryptocurrency, because going through the banking system, of course, so you know for a bank, you have a limit to what you can get in terms of foreign currency. So people just use Bitcoin because of Bitcoin, you can get any amount, well, specifically some sort of amount, and then transferring is not going to be of so much difficulty. It's pretty much easy and frictionless. The problem we've been facing is distribution. How do we announce, tell people about digital technology? But Facebook adopting cryptocurrency is sort of an entrance for us. It sort of vindicates what we've been trying to preach about this new technology called crypto. We'll take a break now, and we'll be right back with stock updates. Do stay with us.
Today's trading makes it four market days of loss on the Nigerian Stock Exchange as the All Share Index dips by 0.49% to close at 28,200.88 basis points. Now, the market cap also closed lower at 13.7%. Four six uh, seven four three trillion naira. Now, taking a look at our top gainers, we see that the oil and gas sector made the most losses today with Okomu Oil, uh, CAP, uh, of course, uh, Forte Oil, and Con Oil making our list of losers. Moving on, we see our list of gainers topped by Nestle, Red Star Express, uh, Nigerian Breweries, and Guarantee Trust Bank. Well, Nestle and Nigerian Breweries are retainers on the gainers chart today, having made the most gains on the market yesterday now moving on this chart shows uh, the market summary for today and uh, we can see that the market turnover came in today at 217.132 million shares worth 1.799 billion naira uh, of course in a total of 3,595 deals on the global stock markets we see FTSE and the Dow Jones having a positive day today with uh, the market record uh, coming in at 0.60% uh, for the All Share Index and at 0.016% for the Dow Jones. And of course, in, uh, uh, for Nikkei in Japan, the All Share Index has dipped lower to 0.69%, a sad day for uh, stock market investors in that Asian country. And that's the update on the stock market today. It's over to you now, Fidelia, for the rest of the news. Well, thank you so much, Anetta, for that update. Let's now move to the foreign scene. Ten Turkish sailors on a cargo ship have been abducted by armed men off the coast of Nigeria. In a statement released on Tuesday, Turkish state media Anadolu said the vessel was attacked on Monday night by pirates who abducted some of its crew members. According to Anadolu, the vessel was coming from Cameroon and was heading to Ivory Coast before it was hijacked. Meanwhile, authorities in Nigeria's maritime sector are yet to react to the developments. Well, Chelsea is facing a transfer ban, but new manager Frank Lampard is confident the Premier League club do not need to bring in new players to taste success. Lampard, who is the club's record goal scorer from his time as a player, was appointed Chelsea's new manager this month, with Chelsea unable to add new players in their squad following a FIFA ban. Lampard has now been taxed with improving the players he inherited from Mauricio Sarri and promoting young players from the club's academy. Lampard will be assisted at Stamford Bridge by former academy coach Jody Morris and the pair are expected to utilise many of the players who have flourished in Chelsea's youth team and are on loan to other clubs. Well, that's the news now. Many thanks for joining us. I am Fidelia Aguncha. Bye for now.